He looks at me, he takes the starters out. And I look back down at him on the side and I said, no, keep them in. Mm -hmm. Because I wanted all guys yeah. to understand, nobody gonna feel sorry for yeah. you. I've never really been vocal about it, but I'm gonna give it to you. Thank you, I appreciate it. <laughs> They're attending schools where arenas are named after known racist individuals. Yes. Mm -hmm. you, just, you know, you gotta realize you're black first. Like with LeBron and he had the N-word on his like, you're black before you're yeah, a basketball player. Woo! <laughs> What's up y'all, it's Barbara DeJour and you're watching Noted on Noted TV. Today I have a special guest with me. I have Lavelle Moulton from the illustrious North Carolina Central University. And I'm so excited to have you here today. <laughs> so you're the head coach at NCCU, which means you're always on campus. How different is it from when you were here undergrad? You know, in many ways it's different, but in many ways it's still the same. Some of our traditions are still here, the 1040 break, uh, Chicken Wednesday. Um, and, you know, just the overall social life of it. But it's kind of different because, you know, the, the buildings are new. And, yeah. um, you know, everything is being renovated. When I was here, it was only one dorm for men. And that wow. was uh, Chitley Hall. Mm -hmm. And now everything is a little more uh, inclusive. You know, you have the co-ed dorms and things of that nature. So it's really different in that aspect. But overall, the experience of North Carolina Central is going to say do you think it was more fun back then from what you see? Because I know you're not yeah, like really. we were more lit. We were more lit. Y'all didn't have phones. It was probably yeah, more that's fun. That's why we were more lit. We, <laughs> had, we had more things to do. If you can share, what are some personality char characteristics that you look for when you're in the process of recruiting? You know, that's huge. A lot of people often um, mistake coaches just by assessing, trying to assess talent. Well, mm -hmm. obviously, talent has a lot to play and go into it. But we'll take a guy who... Um, is maybe a two-star guy mm -hmm. that has a great attitude before we take a three-star guy that's what we call high maintenance. Mm -hmm. And what I found in my career is that I, I just don't, I'm a little older now, mm -hmm. so I don't have the patience to deal with high maintenance individuals, right? Like, it's almost emotionally impossible for me. And so I try to surround myself with low maintenance guys um, with high character, who's going to do the right thing even when your back is turned because that's what character really is, who you are when someone else is not looking. And I think if we can mesh that and build that into a melting pot, we can be successful in the basketball field. Attending NCCU was amazing, and I'm proud to be, you know, a part of the HBCU experience. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you saw the Beyonce Netflix special. Absolutely. <laughs> and she shot way more light into the HBCU yeah. experience. Now, this is my personal opinion. I feel like some of the top recruits, especially since it's a lot of um, black athletes in basketball, I feel like they should start thinking about HBCUs. What do you think? Do you think that's realistic, like, anytime soon? I or? absolutely do. That's, mm -hmm. a, that's an incredible question. Mm -hmm. um, I had that exact conversation yesterday with Jamel Hill. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's really loaded, and it can... You know, you can kind of attack it or approach it from, from all cylinders. The first thing I would say is, I think it all starts with knowledge itself. Mm -hmm. So, if you look at black culture, you can always look at black culture um, with athletics, music, and social life. All of that is pretty much aligned. You know, mm -hmm. in the 60s, a lot of our people, the 50s and 60s, we had a lot of um, incredible athletes attending black colleges because it was the alternative route for mm -hmm. us. And we as, we as black people had one agenda, right? We, well, we just wanted freedom and equality. So we, we had one agenda and we were all stuck on one accord. So the neighborhoods in our communities were seducing and producing these great athletes and encouraging them mm -hmm. and, and, and her, him and hers, to go to HBCUs. Well, integration kind of began in the late 60s. Mm -hmm. And I think our quest to be included so much not only did we include ourselves into something, but we forgot about mm -hmm. our culture and we forgot about the people that were really there and allowed us to have alternative educations and things of that nature when it wasn't even popular, when no one else gave you a chance. And I think, you know, this country was founded off capitalism. Mm -hmm. And I just honestly believe that anytime someone can see a talent for what it's worth, they're going to try to capitalize and monetize off of that and that's what's happened you know with our athletes they're attending schools where arenas are named after 
known racist individuals. Yes. Like, think about this for a second. I always ask if, and I have an issue with this, mm -hmm. and I've never really been vocal about it, but I'm going to give it to you. Thank right? you. Because, I appreciate it. <laughs> but, but think about this. Like, if you really want to know if a coach cares about you, mm -hmm. um, love is a verb. I was always taught that. Like, it ain't a bunch of that. It's just, it's a verb. It's, a, it's an action. Mm -hmm. And you'll know and you'll feel that. It'll become palpable to you. So with all the discriminatory things that we faced as black people in the last couple of years, you know, when the Black Lives Matter movement was at the apex mm -hmm. in the height of this movement, how many white coaches came out and stood and was vocal about Black Lives Matter? Because they've been able to eat and feed their families, mm -hmm. not only their kids, but their kids' kids and three generations down based off the talent levels of those black athletes. Mm -hmm. But when you really need them most, they're nowhere to be found in terms of being vocal. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yo, that's, I have an issue with that. The only coach that I know really spoke out against it was Greg Popovich mm -hmm. in the NBA. Like, Pop All and then Steve Kerr. That's and the Steve only Kerr. one, that's the only one but I thought. On the collegiate level, you don't yes, really hear that rare. when it comes to the revenue, the football and the basketball. And I'm like, yo, man, these guys are making these schools build millions and billions of dollars. And when someone like them is on videotape getting killed in broad mm -hmm. daylight with no gun or whatever by police, they on oh you on your own now. And that's mm -hmm. how I kind of feel. And I'm like, look, we got to get back to. It's okay for us to love each other. It's okay yeah. for us to support each other. It's okay for us not to need anyone else. And us being for each other don't mean we're anti anything mm -hmm. else. So we got to get back to that. So. I know that was a long one yeah. to ask. And what's crazy is when I ask, when I ask um, other college athletes, basketball players, mm -hmm. I ask them, do they feel, like, pressured to speak out? Because most of the people I've interviewed, every guy I've interviewed were black, was black. Right. So I ask them, and either they pass on the question right. or they say, like, they just focus on ball. I'm like, that's so sad because right. it's like you have so many people looking up to you. Right. White, black kids, doesn't matter. Absolutely. And it's like you just, you know, you got to realize you're black first. Like with LeBron and he had the N-word on his, like, you're black before you're yeah, a basketball they're player. They're going to constantly remind you of that. And, it, it's a, and that's the difference between, that's the generational difference. Mm -hmm. a, lot, a lot of people are just cut different than that. But we have to get back to that because our HBCUs molded us and, and allowed us an opportunity when no one else did. Congrats on the three P as the NBA <laughs> champions. I appreciate it. Do your do your coaching styles? I mean, do your coaching style change with playing during tournaments or regular season? Like, do it change, or are you allowed to say? <laughs> yeah, unknowingly it does. Like mm -hmm. I, I, I had to self evaluate mm -hmm. the other day, and you know, it's it's changed. Like my 2014 team, those guys come back and they say, "Coach, you're so soft." You know what I'm saying? And, and, yeah. You know, I have kids and I have a daughter, mm -hmm. so, you know, she's 10. They change so, your daughter. Yeah, oh, she's, <laughs> she's killing me every single day. Like, it's just, she just give me puppy dog looks, mm -hmm. and I'm like, okay, what you want? <laughs> so this group, my 14 team comes back, and they say, Coach, you're so soft. But my current team thinks I'm so hard. Hard on like, yeah. like, and they're like, so they ain't here debating, like, no, mm -hmm. man, he ain't doing that. He used to make us do blah, 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 blah. <laughs> but it does change because I realize there's, there's three calendar seasons to a season. Mm -hmm. You know, you had the preseason, you had the regular season, you had the postseason. All of it is insurmountable, and all of it means a great deal, but that we try to make sure we cut our practice time back, you know, starting in January, because I'm like, listen, if you don't know it by now, you ain't gonna know it anyway. Yeah. So let's have fresh legs, let's mm -hmm. have fresh, healthy bodies as we roll into this tournament. And, you know, as, as you get a generation up each year, you find out the kids are, I don't want to use the word soft, mm -hmm. but they're softer. <laughs> they're softer. Soft. Yeah, they're a little softer, softer right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So, And you have to change that. You have to be able to adapt and adjust as a leader mm -hmm. um, to really get on one common accord with them. So I've been able to do that. I think I still have to work in that area. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's helped us out, man. And come tournament time, we've had some fresh minds, fresh bodies, and fresh legs. And we've been able to, you know, win a couple of championships. Now, let's go back to your first year as the head coach here. Mm -hmm. What was the hardest thing you had to overcome, the hardest obstacle? The culture. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of people don't know. North Carolina Central is really, despite the success, we're only eight years old, mm -hmm. right? So 
Carolina, all those schools, they what, uh, 200? <laughs> they yeah. old. Like, there's no <laughs> old men over there. Mm-hmm. We're eight, so we're kind of like in the infant toddler stages of, of this transition. So when we made the transition from Division Two to Division One, if everyone is being honest, you know, in terms of the administration, everyone across campus, we ain't know what we were getting into. Mm-hmm. Like, we thought we knew because we were on the outside looking in, but we really didn't know what we were getting into. And I remember as assistant coach, um, before I took over, I looked at the, the the point differential for the guarantee games, and I found out we were losing by 40 points a night each time we played our bigger school. Mm-hmm. And I said, if that's ever going to change, we have to cut that like down because it would not only give you confidence, but it means you're just getting better. we got to get better athletes and just change the mentality. We're not going to have a pity party. We're not going to feel sorry for ourselves. And the first game we're playing of my, my coaching career is against Carolina. Mm-hmm. And they're beating us pretty good. Mm-hmm. And Roy, yeah, that, he's a great guy. He's a good friend of mine. He looks at me. He takes the starters out. And I look back down to him on the sideline. I said, no, keep them in. Mm-hmm. Because I wanted our guys to yeah. understand. Nobody going to feel sorry for yeah. anybody. Like, this is why you're going to have to lift this weight. And you're going to have to lift this weight so you can guard Ty Lawson and, and, and do that. Not because we're just asking you to do it. And it helped us get better. And it helped us create a culture of, of, of greatness where we're committed to excellence and we're expecting greatness. And I think that's, that's been something that we've held near and dear to our hearts. And when they played my freshman year at UNC and Central, it was so hard because I am a die-hard Tar Heel fan. So yeah, I was just like, oh, but I go here, so I have to go. Have to, I have to go for us I first. feel the love and energy. <laughs> I feel the love and energy. <laughs> now, I've seen your videos and tweets shared many times via social media, whether it was the, if you think LeBron is overrated, then you're going to recruit tweet, yeah. or if it was a video of your adorable son crying about his favorite oh. player last game. Oh. Did you expect the reaction and engagement? I, I really didn't. Yeah. Like it, it, my wife stay on me all the time. She's like, look, you can't. I think the people, the reason that people connect with me mm-hmm. is because I'm a relatable. I don't mm-hmm. present it's myself as I'm, yeah, like this dude and got my chip. But that can also be a curse as well because mm-hmm. you can't treat, you can't, you can't tweet like yeah. you're relatable. Yeah. And a lot of times, my social media page is always going to be something spiritual, something with some humor, yeah. and something with my family. That's yeah. just what it's going to be. And when I, a lot of times I, I found, especially on Twitter, I have a, a tons of high school, middle school AAU coaches, junior college coaches, assistant coaches, and they all desire to be a head coach. So mm-hmm. I try to give them like little nuggets. And I had an opening, and someone sent me a, a a resume and mm-hmm. I looked at their resume and what I do I just go check their social media pages as well mm-hmm. you know I get their names and check their social media pages kind of like we do our recruits mm-hmm. and he was on his social media page saying man LeBron garbage man like this dude is just like he ain't nothing nah, 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 nah. Yeah. and I'm like if you think he's garbage yeah like <laughs> we're talking about LeBron James yeah, like yeah. whether or not you like him the yeah. dude ain't garbage yeah you know not. what I'm saying so my thing to him was like, who are you going to recruit for North Carolina Central if you think LeBron <laughs> is some trash? And that was the takeaway that I wanted them to have for that. And, you know, so I didn't expect it to get legs like that. Uh-huh. But somebody starts retweeting it and, you know. Hey, so it takes USA a, Today. Yeah, now it takes a life on its own. And, yeah. you know, even I was texting Bron, like, during the time, like, yo, you see that? Like, uh-huh. you know, so it's always, it gets to that point. Well, thank you for coming. Well, thank you for allowing me to come in today and sit and talk with me. Thank you guys for watching. And if you want to know more or see more, just like, subscribe.